to worship you for what you did on the cross of Calvary. Father, we say take glory, honor, and adoration. You died so that we can live. Oh, ancient world. Father, we thank you because this is the debt we cannot pay. The debt that we hope and we cannot pay. You paid it for us with your holy blood. Hallowed. Without sin, you took all our sin on your body and it was nailed to the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this is the testimony of our salvation, not by our work, but your work. And you gave us the grace to be called sons of God. Join it here. Father, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. We say, take glory, take honor and adoration. For in Jesus' name, we are prayed. Jam your hands together. Jam your hands together. Because it's a good goal. Jam your hands together. Jam your hands together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we take our seats, let us bring out our Bible. We don't read a verse or two. Hebrew chapter 9, verse 22. He paid the price that he did not hold. And this is the debt that we cannot pay. He gave us salvation. Are we there? Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22. The Bible says, and almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's what? Is it so in your Bible? Is it so in your Bible? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is this man that paid the price? Who is this man that saved us from the clutch of death? Misfortune. Is the I am that I am. Yeshua and Mashiach. John has the testimony. In John chapter 1, verse 29. Let's open it again before we see that. John chapter 1, verse 29. Are we there? I will read it then. We will all echo it together. Praise the Lord. Just listen to me now. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin, the sin, the sin. Are we all there? Let's go together. One, two, go. Behold the Lamb of God, you may have your sin, which taketh away the sin of the world. It's not only my sin, it's not only your sin, but the sin of the whole world. Praise the Lord. When they heard in that garden of Eden, and we fell. The Lord said he wants to have communion with us. He wants to have fellowship with us. He wants to right the wrong. Because he loved us so much. 
Praise the Lord. He loves me. He loves us so much. Let's sing this song. He loves me. Oh, the love of God. Oh, the love of Father for us. Oh, the love that the Lord has for us. He loves me. He loves me. With all the love he loves. He said you will not die in vain. He said you will not die carrying the body of sin. Hallelujah. It was the decision of our good because of the Lord that he has for us. By the therefore God so loved the world. It's a good God. We are the works of his hand. And he loved us so much because after the creation, he said, behold, they were what? Very, very beautiful. And he gave us dominion because of the law he has for us. To rule over the earth. To take dominion. To be in charge. Then he saw man falling. Then his law cannot allow him to leave us wandering in sin. Praise the Lord. So, in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only begotten son, the only son that he had. For God so loved the world. You cannot sacrifice your only begotten son for him, no matter the kind of care or love. Praise the Lord. In fact, you will tell me that if you have two coats, give one. But if it is one coat you have, don't give it. That is what you will say. Praise the Lord. If I have two coats, two shirts, two ties, two shoes, I can give you one. But if I have just one, just one, can I give it to you? Can I sacrifice it for you? Scarcely can a man die for his friend. Praise the Lord. But this was not the case. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. After the baptism, the Bible said that the heaven opened. And he said, This is my my what? My what? Yeah, listen to me. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know the life you have lived before now. How many sacrifices you have made? How many coven you have been to? How many spirits you have had encountered with? But I'm here to tell you what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. For God sent up his son into this world to contain the world. But that through him we might be saved. Don't tell me you have gone too far. You have gone to the evil forest. You have made human sacrifice. You have done all manner of things. I can't go back. The sin is too much. But I'm here to announce to you. According to the word of the Lord, he said, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And he said the word, it is finished. 
No more sacrifice. Just accept me in faith. Repent of all your evil ways. Carry your cross and follow me. In fact, he has not sent his son into this world to condemn the world. Oh, you don't know what I've done. How many abortions? You don't know how I killed thee. You don't know how I did that. If you are willing to take a look at yourself and to take a look at the cross and say for the sake of what he did on the cross of Calvary, I believe. The Lord will help your unbelief. And the Lord will fix everything concerning you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the purpose for which Christ came is not for you to die, but so that you can have life. He said the devil came to kill, to destroy, to steal. But the Son of Man came into this world so that we can have life even more abundantly. And he spoke a word. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. May the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ be survive. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know whether you are carrying curse. He said, in my family, this is what is happening. This is what is happening. We don't even cross 50. You won't understand. We don't have many children. You won't understand. But he came to change everything. To take away all your curse. All the causes that have been placed on you from generation to generation. You are no longer in that family again. You are now the family of God. The family of the Son of God. A new blood is in your vein. Praise the Lord. Do you believe, church? If only you believe. If only you believe what he did on the cross of Calvary. You will know that has paid all the price. And he said, It is finished. The sacrifice is accomplished. No more work for you to do. Now, by grace, they are saved. Praise the Lord. For God did not send his son into this world so that he can condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. He came for your salvation. Praise the Lord. And in verse 18, he said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. That is the condition. That is the condition. He's not going to compel you. He's not going to force you. How to roll. They said, We have one who is a murderer. We have one who is a robber. We have one who is a lawbreaker. His name is we have another one, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A very pious and holy man. Choose which of them do you want me to release to you? And he said, give unto all Barabbas, the robbers. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. But that was his destiny. He had a destiny. And he fulfilled his destiny. You will fulfill your destiny. By the virtue of the power in Christ, his atoning blood, you will fulfill your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. He came so that he can die. He did not come to build mansion. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's, 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 he's serious. He came to die young. 33 or 30 what? So that you can attain longevity. You can reach the age of 130. 130. He came to die for you. If only you believe. You see the ocean. Massive. All form of evil there. But he kept you. His mercy kept you. You slept in the night. He kept you alive. So many arrows that they have shot at you. 
but it protected you. It defended you. Why? Because you believe. Whosoever believe should not perish. But what? Receive the grace to believe. Receive the grace to believe. Receive the grace to believe. The Son of God. In Jesus' name. What is your testimony? What is your testimony? The Bible said in Revelation, they overcame by the testimony of their mouth. And by what? By what? By what? The blood. The blood that was shed at Calvary. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether you are afraid of anything, but I'm announcing to you, if only you believe, if Christ is your Lord and your Savior, if you trust him with all your heart, do not believe anything that the devil can do unto you. He is just a roaring lion. He makes fake things to appear real. Praise the Lord. Hold on to him. And as you hold on to him, he will see you through in all aspects of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. God saw him coming. He said, Behold! The Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the whole world. Just consider where you are seated. How have you lived your life? How has it been? He taken away the sin. The blood touched you. You are now a saint. Righteous. A pious man. If you believe, come to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you believe? He did a lot for us. Ephesians. Everybody should open his Bible to the book of Ephesians. Let us see what he has done for us. Someone with a loud voice can read it for us. Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 16. Today is not a day of long sermon. Praise the Lord. It's a day of celebration for what it did for us on the cross of Calvary. It's a day to gather together and celebrate the risen Christ. Praise the Lord. What I want you to know, he did a lot for us. A lot. Are we in Ephesians chapter 2? Verse 14 to 16. If you are there, you can read. It is our peace. He has broken down the middle wall of partition. You cannot go to the Lord. You don't need to pray through me. You don't need to pray through any pastor, any deacon. You don't need a deep beer. He has broken down the wall of partition. Go ahead. Having abolished in respect the iniquities, even the law of commandments containing ordinances, or to make himself a fine one man. To making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God. That he might reconcile. That he might reconcile both unto God. Go ahead. In one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am reconciled. That is why we can gather together. We are being reconciled. Praise the Lord. No fear of anything again. No fear of anything. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. It's a blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us. The handwriting, the ordinances that was against us. That prophecy when you were born. They planted a tree. With your name, I command that tree to be uprooted and to die now in the mighty name of Jesus. And when they go there, they call your name. You start to feel somehow you are redeemed, you are reconciled. It's no longer your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. There is the one old woman. He said, I am. Yes, I know the day was born. I know I have this punch, and they went and they buried it. 
And I want to go there to manipulate your future. It is not possible. Talk to your neighbor and say it's not possible. By virtue of what you did for the cross of Calvary, everything that is planted, that is contrary to you, that is against you, let the head commit it now. In Jesus' name. Plotting out the ordinances, the unwriting that was written against us, which was contrary, and he took it out of the way. He took it out of the way. He took it out of the way. And he did what? He nailed it to the cross. Praise the Lord. He nailed it to the cross. Do you believe that he nailed it to the cross? That problem in the family. That sickness in the family. Do you believe that it has been nailed to the cross? That death that you are so scared of. Praise the Lord. By what he did on the cross of Calvary and the scripture we have read, you will see that he has consumed the death by himself. He has judged the death. Praise the Lord. Amen. What did he do? He broke it down. Praise the Lord. He broke it, that law, that ordinances. He abolished it. Everything that is written against you is abolished. In the mighty name of Jesus. Against your family, it's abolished in the mighty name of Jesus. He died for my sake, for your sake. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, praise the Lord. He blotted it out. It's, it's, it's so, such a wonderful picture. Blotted out the unwritten of ordinances that was against us. Which was contrary to us. Anything that is contrary to you, by the reason of what he did on the cross of Calvary, I abolished it. I cancelled it. I break it. I blot it out by the blood of the risen Christ. In Jesus' name. And I don't want to talk to you today. By way of summary, open to Colossians chapter 4. Because when he was going, before his crucifixion, he said, Love and thou me, if you love me, feed my sheep. Make sure the church of God will not suffer. Praise the Lord. But John told him, he said, oh, God, You know that I love you. Say, if you love me, do what? Feed my sheep. Because Christ is come. And he came back in the spirit. Stronger. He cannot be killed again. Praise the Lord. But since he's not here physically, he said, you that you are here physically, your brethren that is weak, can call you. The one that is sick, Minister to him. This is the task he has committed to our day. If you watch that film, when Christ was nailed on the cross, he looked down and he saw his mother. And he said, Woman, behold thy son. Who was the person he was referring to? Church of God, who was the disciple he was referring to as the son of his mother? Is it Johnny Beloved? For who? You have a responsibility. He said, Son, behold, your mother, they made eye contact, handling over the responsibility of care. Because the living will be administered to physically through a God. So I'm here to announce to you now that Christ has paid the price, finished the job on the cross of Calvary, you now have the responsibility of providing for the church. 
or providing for your brother, for providing for your sister, for looking after your brother and your sister. He said, I was sick, you did not visit me. I was hungry, you did not give me any food to eat. I was naked, you did not brought me. And they said, Master, when did I see you? Like this, that we did not minister to you. He said, if you failed to do it to any of my any of my what? He said, you have not done it unto me. And I will say unto you on that day, depart from me. Give focus of iniquity. Why? You are not committed adultery or fornication. You are not killed anybody. But to whom that knoweth how to do good and doeth not, the fact that it is a touch of God echo it out. If you know how to do good and you chose not to do it, what it is? It's a sin. Praise the Lord. So in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. Anybody there? Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. The Lord has something to tell us. Any moment from now, I will be closing. But this word must be spoken. Are we there? Yeah. I want someone to actually read it for me. So that you will not say that pastor talk hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let it be from your heart. Now, it's not the pastor's word. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. Shall I read it myself? You want the pastor to read it by himself? Good. And say to Archibald, and say to Archibald, you need to put yourself there. Put your name there. And say to Adepetu, and say to Jeremiah, and say to Obiora, and say to John, and say to Innocent, and say to the Hebrews, take Take it. Take it to the ministry which thou hast received. Take it to the ministry which thou hast There's a saying in my place. They used to say, I like a monthly judge of the I am on so on my life. Praise the Lord. Do you know the that pray mantis? Do you know him? That animal is always he say he has finished. Now the children they should do what carry their cross is now left for them. Christ finished it on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord. He committed the responsibility. So upon this uh, uh, rock, I will do what? I will build my church. You are the rock. Praise the Lord. You are the rock. I'm announcing to you, you are the rock. You are not just uh, a sandy ground. No. You are solid. You are firm. He said, upon this rock, I will do what? I will build my church. And what? The gate of hell shall not prevail. The gate of hell will never prevail over you. The gate of hell will never prevail over your family. The gate of hell will never prevail over your business. The Lord will enlarge your post. He will bless you so much and make you a blessing. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to conclude with what Timothy wrote. Praise the Lord. Because we cannot afford to lose anything. We can't lose anything. We can't leave anything to chances. We can't be careless. Because the Bible says we should be as wise as a serpent. And as harmless as what? As a dove. Because of the devil, his cohorts that are everywhere deceiving and distracting. You will not fall prey. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not fall prey. I pray for you. Everything that you do, you will excel. The Lord will help your unbelief. 
the Lord will help your strength. Where you are weak, receive strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy. Timothy has two books. Remember? These words are coming from the second Timothy, first, uh, second Timothy, first Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. I want us all to Google them. It's very important. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back? He has resurrected. He has ascended. Right? After the resurrection, there was ascension. This is it. And he said that in the same way that you look at him going up, he will come down. That was the, uh, uh, the angel told them. And we believe that he's coming back. He's now coming back not as a lamb to be crucified again. He will not die again. Praise the Lord. He's coming to reign. He's coming to dissipate judgment. Because judgment has been committed unto his hand. God the faithful, the father of all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will not judge a man. Do you know that? He has committed judgment into the hand of his son. Because it was the son that died. He made the sacrifice. He's going to be on the throne. He's going to judge. That throne is called the throne of Bema, the Bema sex. I'm sure you are aware of it. We are all Bible children. Praise the Lord. Are we all aware of this? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. If you are not aware, I want you to know now that it is Jesus Christ that is coming as a king and as a judge. All judgment have been committed into his hand. Praise the Lord. So it is better for us now to believe. Once you believe, you will not be judged. But you will be blessed. You will receive your blessing. Talk to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I will receive my blessing. I will receive my blessing. Say it one more time. I will receive my blessing. One more time. I will receive my blessing. If you faint not, praise the Lord. If you faint not, you know the book of life. You know, the Bible said that in the book of Revelation, it said there are books. Multiple books. But those books, they can't take you to heaven. The book of the pastor. I hope you know that. The pastor knows the best singer, the lead singer. He knows he, he will not his head. You agree with me? <laughs> That is not the book that counts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To the pastor, you are ministry. But to God, you are entertaining. God forbid. Say, God forbid. God forbid. And that's why some of them they take some chances, even before the minister. Did you know hear of a pastor? Traveling out of Nigeria and time he go on his way and he was caught at the airport. To so everybody around, he's a minister of God, he's a great pastor. But there is another book. His name is not there. Because you have to be under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not under the unction and anointing of Igbo. Or under the unction or anointing of cocaine or any form of alcohol or any form of intoxicant. There are books. Your departmental leaders has his own record. If I call anybody this one, I will show up. But is the heaven the one book, the only book? That book is the book of salvation. And that is why the Bible said that he who stands should do all. Take he less he what? What is the purpose?
purpose behind your prayer? What is the purpose behind your actions? And that is why Timothy is telling us, this is where I will conclude. Praise the Lord. And I want you to listen very well. Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Say, the Lord is telling us. Okay, let me start from verse uh, 12. Praise the Lord. Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man do what? Let no man do what? Be thou an example of the believers. Be an example. Christ has finished the race. He has done everything. He has gone. He has left you in charge. I never left you powerless. He said, carry ye in where? Jerusalem. Until I send the Holy Ghost unto you. The Holy Ghost is your empowerment. He will empower you. He will be your teacher. He will teach you all things. He will be your confidence. Any form of void in your life, the Holy Spirit will fill it. He will make you to complete. In fact, the Holy Spirit will perfect everything concerning you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he did not just leave you. He gave you something. So ask yourself, since you believe, have you received the Holy Ghost? Ask yourself today. Ask yourself. Or is it like the testimony of some people in the Bible that since he passed on, you have never even had anything like the Holy Ghost. May that not be your portion. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May that not be your portion. The Lord said, Be an example, O ye ever Be an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in faith, and in purity. In charity is in love. In charity is what? In love. And thank God he also said in purity. There's a difference between love and lust. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Do not despise your youth. And in verse 13, he said, till I come. Church of God, are you with me? Till I come. In attendance to reading, to exaltation, and to the doctrine. The doctrine. The doctrine. That we should love one another. If you don't love one another, then we are not the we are not we are not his disciples. He left all the commandments to do or to love one another. In exaltation. Come to the church. Listen to the word of God. Give attention to reading. 